The Hollingsworth family has been a significant part of our community and the Ogoma District's growth and development for over 100 years. Their business expertise and humble, generous leadership stems from a philosophy and way of life passed down through the generations, a standard that began with and modeled by family patriarch Fremlin Edward Hollingsworth. Their story began in 1887 with the birth of Fremlin to parents Jesse and Edward Hollingsworth. Living in Montreal at the time, the Hollingsworth family moved back to the parents' childhood home of Marksville, now known as Hilton Beach. Grandfather uh, grew up in Hilton Beach and uh, had a great love of St. Joe's Island, had a greater love of hunting. And his family became concerned that if he didn't go on to another job or education, that he might just become a hunter full time. So they set up that he would move to Sioux, Michigan, and he went to a business college there. And after he graduated from there, he went to work for a lumber company in Sioux, Michigan, Lock City, which is still in business in Sioux, Michigan. Uh, he decided then that he wanted to come back to Sioux, Ontario, and he came and got a job with the Corrigan Lumber Company, which ultimately he bought out in 1915. Early on in his career, during those tumultuous times, when many businesses did not survive the economic roller coaster, Fremlin developed a business philosophy that would become his guiding principle for decades to come. At 27 and unattached, Fremlin caught a glimpse of a certain redhead girl, Agnes Simpson, at a popular social event. They married on March 31, 1923. The couple honeymooned in Detroit, returning to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan in the middle of April, where they discovered that the ice on the river was still solid and safe to walk. Despite Agnes's objections, the newlyweds trekked across the river to check on the company's business and to begin their lives together. Fremlin and Agnes moved into their first residence, which was only a short walk to the office, later purchasing a home on Albert Street. They started raising their family, and in 1925, with the birth of Fremlin Simpson and later sons Edward Lynn, Ian Wolner, and daughter Ellen Marie, the next generations of Hollingsworth began. My dad was the eldest of, uh, of the family. Uh, and he went off to the war, and when he came back, uh, my grandfather uh, asked him to come into business. And so he didn't have the privilege of going to university and getting a university degree, but he was uh, learned the school of hard knocks. My dad is a perfect example of that. His, his two brothers, both civil engineers, uh, and they worked so well together for all the years they, they were partners. Uh, never had a, a disagreement that I ever heard about, always majority rule and just had a wonderful working relationship. My mother was uh, one of eight women out of a class of 300 at Osgoode Hall. And I think was probably one, probably the first woman ever to practice in the Sioux. And she continued to practice uh, as my sister and I were growing up and uh, kept, kept her skill set up. And uh, I remember one time my father and I sitting at the uh, dining room table and we were ranting and raving about something in business. And my mother looked at us and said, listen, here are you two characters. They're not courts of justice, they're courts of law. And don't ever forget the distinction. Most outstanding about my father was his value system, which he managed to impart to all of us easily. He, he was such a relaxed guy. He was uh, like his own father, always calm, always sort of deliberate, and uh, imminently patient with everyone around him. My mother shared a lot of his uh, ideas, but was different. She came from a family that was musically inclined. And, and uh, so I guess if we have humor, it came from my mother's side of the family. She had a dry wit and a, a good sense of comical things. And my dad loved to laugh. So you could see how they would be uh, involved with each other. Um, I'll start with Dad. He also carried through the values that he was taught. Christmas morning, the family would gather down the living room to open up Christmas gifts. 
And before we open up Christmas gifts, we would he would give us a speech, and he still gives us the same speech. Do not forget about others in this world. Others in this world have a harder time. Some people today on this special day don't have food, don't have shelter, and um, we need to remember this every day throughout the year, not just on Christmas. Mom, to be very strong. She has had a great life with Dad, but she's also had some challenges. Um, I hope I can say this, but she, most people know she was married before. Her first husband died in a hunting accident. He drowned and he raised, she raised two boys on her own for a bit. I love her for that. And um, she basically um, has given me a really strong backbone. Well, Marie was the youngest, of course, of the siblings, and uh, I think it's probably the joy of her father's eyes, if, if I could say that. And um, she was educated just like the boys. Uh, Later, she was to go to school in Montreal and where she met her husband, Al Frassard. She had four children, uh, three girls and a boy, of whom I'm very close to uh, each of them still, but uh, the eldest daughter is my neighbor. Marie was good natured. She was smart, smart as any of the boys. She ran whatever investment she had uh, herself. And, uh, she liked a bit of red wine at times, and uh, uh, she liked to have fun, both she and her husband did. By 1938, the family moved to Boren Avenue, a home that would create many precious memories for generations to come. Their grandchildren share some of those special memories. Uh, he was bigger than life. He was a kind of guy that impressed you. Me as a little boy, of course, but Really, it was his demeanor. He was as tall as a building in, in our eyes. And it seemed to be uh, that way for other folks too. Mm -hmm. I think he enjoyed life a lot. And uh, there's always instances in our discussions and family about things he had to say or anecdotes about his life that stick with me. He was uh, classically raised. He, was well-educated and self-educated besides. Would always spend time with all of us, um, especially um, when we're at his house, he would go out to the back gardens and, and walk with us because he enjoyed um, his rose bushes very, very much. Christmas time, remember the families would get together down the Windsor Park Hotel in the Oak Room and he believed that bringing the family together, his sons and, and daughter, and their kids, my cousins, was very important. I remember that he instilled in us how important family is. And um, the warmth he um, showed us, um, I strongly believe we have carried it on with all of us. She taught us about the importance of charity. She, um, in her own kind way, um, taught us how to give back to the community. She helped to shape our values of giving, loving, caring, and... Um, when we were children, she would read to us. And uh, she'd read the same story over and over again. <laughs> she, she had an incredible patience, right? She just continued and all of the kids in my family, I suppose the rest of you, remember that. The business continued to expand with Fremlin becoming a partner with Frederick J. Schmidt of Petoskey, Michigan, who owned Maple Block Mills. Together, they purchased the mills that had not survived the Depression, and by 1934, they began to acquire and install equipment in the mill, creating Michigan Maple Block Company of Canada, selling hard tables, butcher blocks, cutting boards, and other maple products throughout Canada. My grandfather started uh, the Michigan Maple Block Company of Petoskey, Michigan. Uh, their owner, Mr. Schmidt, wanted to expand into Canada, so he came to the closest Canadian city, being Sault Ste. Marie, and came to the closest mill, which was, was Sioux Mill, and uh, talked my grandfather into to buying it. And one of the amazing statistics to me is that they bought the, the equipment. It was the Depression. And they bought it five cents a pound. FOB Sault Ste. Marie shipped from Chicago. It had no value what, what the equipment was worth, just what it weighed. And uh, my grandfather ran that portion of the business, and then my uncle Ian ran it for a number of years. He 
equipment that they used to start the business came from the Detroit automakers. They were in those days phasing out the use of wood. And that's how we got a lot of the equipment for, you know, that came as John said, freighted to Sault Ste. Marie. And the second thing was that somewhere perhaps in the 80s, uh, Ian and his wife went to the Smithsonian in Washington and they were visiting a setup which was apparently a turn of the century um, millwork operation. <laughs> and he came back and he said something like, well, we're, st we're still using some of that equipment in, in Michigan Maple. <laughs> so I guess it was a joke or not, but uh, there might have been some truth to that. True to his philosophy, Fremlin lived by his belief. He became an active member of the community and was often called upon to assist with various charitable and community projects. Fremlin's astute business sense and ability to raise funds were often sought after to assist with many important community projects, including successfully raising $7.5 million to support the war efforts with the sale of victory bonds, running a one-man campaign at the request of Sir James Dunn to assist with a $37,000 fundraising shortfall for the General Hospital. Fremlin's loan effort raised $137,000 to cover the shortfall, as well as raising additional money to help the Plummer Hospital. And of course, helping countless numbers of people who needed a little help of some kind. Well, first off, Fremlin was absolutely instrumental in the formation of uh, what was then the United Appeal, uh, the Welfare Federation of Sault Ste. Marie, Cora, and Taryn Torres. It was the official first name. He and others in the community, other community leaders, uh, basically formed United Way. By the late 1940s, the next generation of Hollingsworths was ready to become a part of the family business. Simpson, the eldest son, had completed his service with the Royal Canadian Air Force and had joined the company. Lynn had completed his engineering degree and began working in the bookkeeping department. Four years later, Ian completed his civil engineering degree and also joined the company. With all three sons actively engaged in the family business, by 1952, Fremlin was ready to retire and to begin his next career as president of Great Lakes Power, a role he held for the next 19 years. Simpson was the first of the next generation to take over the role as president of Sue Mill and Lumber Company, followed by each of his brothers in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Each of the sons took responsibility for an area of the family business. Simpson overseeing the retail side, Lynn the property and building division, and Ian taking oversight of the mills, including Michigan Maple Block Company. The business continued to flourish and grow under the leadership of the next generation. The retail store on North Street was remodeled. Downey Building Supplies was acquired. The mill on North Street that handmade trusses moved to Sackville Road. Sioux Mill and Lumber Company purchased stores in Wawa and operated a lumber supply company until 1990. With the second boom in the uranium mines, in 1974, they opened a store in Elliott Lake, which they continue to operate today. In the early 70s, a second retail store was opened at the corner of Sackville Road and Second Line. The new location allowed the growth of services, including installation and sales departments. Home building grew in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. The Hollingsworth family developed residential homes in the Fort Creek area, Allworth Place, Broadview Gardens, Kensington Gardens, and State Streets. The Hollingsworth family and the Myers family go way back. Uh, my dad was a railroader, and as a young man, uh, 36 years of age, he lost his arm uh, on a railroad accident. He came back to Sault Ste. Marie after spending six months in Sunnybrook Hospital and Rehab in Toronto. And he started a business. He started a, a little grocery store. He had a little bit of insurance money. And uh, it's a store that uh, still exists up on Upper People's Road. I think it's called Our Place. And behind the store, there was a lumber yard. It was uh, owned by a man named Mr. Rodis. And my dad got a bug for the lumber business. And he started to carry a little bit of lumber on consignment. 
And through ever, whatever business he was doing in those days, he had uh, business to do with the Hollingsworth family, uh, with Sue Mill as a customer. And the three men, Lynn Simpson and Ian Hollingsworth, uh, who became lifelong friends with my family, my dad in particular, they saw something in this young man. Um, they had come from a family where the business was established, and they saw something in this young man who had absolutely nothing, but was working very hard to establish himself for his family. So they uh, actually, in fact, became the first shareholders in what was known then as Myers Builder Supplies. I look at the Hollingsworth men as men who have invested in this community, their father invested in this community, their um, children invest in this community, their grandchildren invest. And you mentor, you look at other young people and how can you help them? And needless to say, my dad uh, did enjoy some success and was able to uh, buy back the shares. But those three men were his first shareholders, Ian Simpson and, and uh, uh, Lynn Hollingsworth. And in fact, Lynn and my dad became lifelong, very fast friends. And right up until days before my dad died, he and Lynn were exchanging books and uh, they mean a lot uh, to our family. Our family had a living in this community through the uh, investment and the care and the recognition that these men saw in a young man that was my dad. This was all before I was born. So I feel that um, when you have an opportunity to give back in the community, uh, in business, uh, in the personal life. Um, my dad was one of the founders of Big Brothers here in Sault Ste. Marie. And again, he saw that example of uh, philanthropy and of giving back in the nonprofits the way the Hollingsworth family have done. And I'm just very grateful for a family like this because I think that's what builds our community. And it's really important that we all do our part. Because they recognized that there are many people quietly working in these communities making a real difference in the lives of others. Throughout this period of growth and success, the brothers continued their father's philosophy with each brother actively engaged in the community. The list of involvement in charitable causes, health and service organizations, military service, church, business, and even political involvement were numerous, and for some were lifelong commitments. The importance of giving back did not end with the brothers. In fact, by this time, each of the Hollingsworth siblings were married with children of their own, and so continued the teachings of Bremlin Hollingsworth. By 1992, the family business was ready to pass to the next generation. John Hollingsworth, son of Simpson and Moira, was the first of the Fremlin's grandchildren to take on the role of president with cousins Lynn Hollingsworth, Paul Hollingsworth, and Melville, and Scott McGilbrey all leading various aspects of the family business. The business continued to expand and upgrade. The installation department grew, the prefab truss plant incorporated technology, retail operations were consolidated in 2003, Michigan Maple continued to operate until 2006, the Great Northern Road Store continued to operate and evolve, and the Elliott Lake Store remains as a leader in building products and renovation supply. Lynn, son of Lynn Sr. and Rita May, would take over the presidency in 2008 after John's retirement and would remain at the helm until his retirement in 2016. Again, through it all, the next generation of Hollingsworths would continue to be actively involved in the many causes and organizations that were important to the family and to their business. The family has maintained involvement with Rotary over 95 years. The Hollingsworths, Sue Mill Lumber and Company, and their employees continue to actively participate in the annual United Way campaigns. In the early 2000s, John Hollingsworth and Dr. David Wald co-chaired the Sioux Area Hospital You Have a Stake in the Sioux campaign, raising a record $29 million for the hospital. The Hollingsworth family gave the Sioux Area Hospital the largest private donation to the campaign, to name the Hollingsworth Algoma District Cancer Center. In 2015, the Hollingsworth family, Sue Mill and Lumber Company, and their employees celebrated 100 years of service. The family chose to celebrate their success by giving back to the communities that have been an important part of their lives, donating $100,000 to various organizations in Sault Ste. Marie, Elliott Lake, and the surrounding area, because they recognized that there are many people quietly working in these communities, 
making a real difference in the lives of others, but needing a little financial support. Over the years, the Hollingsworth family has quietly and generously supported many charitable causes and organizations, helped countless numbers of people, volunteered thousands of hours, provided a helping hand, a fresh start, advice, a leadership, a great example, and so much more. For this, we want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you have done to make a difference.